This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a beautiful website. Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we are continuing the Mario series where again we're going to be making World 1 Level 1 of the Mario game, the original, and we are going to be animating Mario in here and kind of making it look more realistic but still kind of cartoony. So uh, since the last part I've kind of done a very tiny bit of level design. I've added two layers of bricks so that Mario can run in between them and then I've added kind of the second level platform that's just one layer of bricks. So nothing new there. I just copied what we've had so far, except uh, now I've added this pipe object, which I've also eroded and I'll show you how to make it. Uh, and it also includes a includes a, a fairly fancy material that has a bit of a mission and a bit of a proceduralness, including uh, the dirt on the bottom. So in this tutorial, we're going to make pipes. It's very simple. So starting off with the modeling, which is definitely the easiest part. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cylinder making sure that there are a lot of segments or a lot of vertices so it looks smooth. And then I'm just going to kind of take it and position it uh, somewhere where I like it. And then in the top view, I want to make sure that it's in between these uh, two layers of bricks. Again, you can make yours one layer. I'm going to make mine two layers thick, which lets me have a, a wider pipe, which we know is all good. Okay, so in edit mode, I'm going to scale on the everything except the z-axis. Z and you do that by scaling and then hitting shift z which will expand, expand on the X and Y and nothing else. So here's before and here's after. So you can see it's maintaining the same height. And then I'm actually going to bring it up on the Z axis as well. Next, add a loop cut and then take these faces and then extrude along normals. And you can see uh, very quickly we are getting the correct shape. Final thing, take the interface, inset, extrude downwards. And there you go, you have a pipe. Really the only thing you might change here is kind of the proportions of it. So again, scale, shift Z uh, to kind of make this smaller. And you kind of want to just play around uh, with how this looks. Again, uh, the cool thing about this is at any point you can just kind of like select uh, these faces and make the pipe a different height uh, without doing too much. Uh, kind of quality of life stuff. I'm going to take these two edge loops and bevel them. Uh, with some vertices so that this has some nice rounding. And then finally, uh, I'm gonna use the eroded add-on that I made. Again, this is a free version that you can use. Uh, I have a paid version that gives you much more uh, control, uh, but you can get the free version, link in the description. You just uh, select your model, you click erode it, and it's going to uh, erode your model. Now, before we do that, actually, I do wanna modify this just a tiny bit uh, so that the erosion looks uh, more successful. So I'm gonna first of all bring this down and second of all, I'm going to take these faces and kind of scale them inwards so there's more thickness. And then I'm going to hit erode it. And now I like the look of this much more. So I'm just doing erosion, uh, not so that everything looks broken down, but so that when we look from far away, it's still going to have some like extra detail. And we're going to make this look kind of soft and cartoonish, even though it's eroded. Okay, uh, so we have all this geometry for the pipe. Uh, next, let's make the material, which is the interesting part. In shading, uh, create a new material. I'm going to call mine new pipe because I already have a pipe material. And I want to do a couple things. Uh, first of all, we're not just going to take this and kind of make it green, which kind of seems like the move, uh, because it kind of looks very plain. So I want to add some randomness, but not just adding a noise texture. In fact, I want the color to change as we wrap around the pipe. So if you look at the game, that's kind of how the shading looks like. There's lines going around the pipe. Turns out this is actually pretty easy to do. We take texture coordinates and look at object coordinates that are gonna be centered in the middle of the pipe, or the origin of the middle of the pipe. And then we can use a gradient texture set to radial, which you can see, especially from the top view, uh, gives us this kind of radial, obviously, gradient going from zero to one. Uh, why is this useful? It's useful because now if we use this as a coordinate system for a noise texture, you can see we're getting randomness, but it varies as we go along it and we get these nice like strips which is what I'm looking for. In fact I'm going to get the factor uh, since I don't want um, color and then I'm just going to kind of increase the contrast here. So bring up the black levels a little, bring down the white levels, just make it a bit higher contrast and now uh, we can pick some colors. So may most of this is going to be green, maybe like a tiny bit yellowish and then for the dark part I'm going to make it the same. Uh, but just kind of like a different uh, hue and uh, much darker, I think. And then you connect that to the base color and it's not gonna look perfect per se, uh, but you can see that it looks a lot better than what we had before. Well, I guess uh, we don't really have a color before, so let me add a color. So this is before and this is after. It just makes it look more varied and more natural in my opinion. 
Now you could go into this and kind of make this a four dimensional noise and then play around with the uh, distribution here, uh, but I'm happy with our like default settings, okay? Uh, next thing is I want this to be a shiny pipe, even though it's eroded. We're not, we're doing pseudo realism here, okay? So I'm gonna take the roughness and I'm gonna bring it down, making it much shinier. You can see it's actually catching some of that light and uh, casting reflections in a sense. Um, and then, and then we're gonna use the trick we've been using for the bricks, where we're actually gonna add some subsurface. Again, it's not physically accurate, uh, but subsurface is gonna make this kind of look more like wax, uh, which ends up looking more edible and more like uh, cartoony, right? So I'm gonna increase the subsurface a little and change the subsurface color to kind of this like yellowish uh, green. Okay, so this is without, and then this is with, and we can make it a bit more intense. So this is with, this is without. It just adds a little extra something, I think, okay? It does make it render a bit slower, that's kind of the cost. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, how can we make this better, more detail? Well, first of all, we can use this noise texture, this radial from before, and convert it into a normal map for free, uh, which is gonna look a bit intense, so I'm gonna bring down the strength, uh, just so we have some extra normal mapping on here. And then I wanna add two things. I wanna add dirt on the bottom where it's contacting the brick so it doesn't just look like two objects intersecting each other, which is what it is. Um, and also I want to add some emission using a Fresnel. Now, one thing I'm thinking of is um, I might want the like bottom layer and we can use proportional editing for this uh, to kind of be resting on the tops of the bricks. Or you could have it be the opposite, where you can have it going all the way down through the stage. I don't know what looks more natural, honestly. I think honestly it looks better. I mean, I guess it makes more sense if it's down here, right? I don't know. We could play around with it. Um, next, I want to add a mission, okay? To do that, I'm going to do something a bit weird. I'm going to add a Fresnel node, which is going to give us kind of the view angle. I'm going to clamp it down, and then I'm going to multiply it. So it's the same kind of gradient but it's a bit more intense, okay? Take this, multiply it by like two or three. So now you can see it's just a bit brighter. Make that the emission strength. Uh, so we're saying emit only in these areas and emit the color. And I found kind of like a turquoise looks pretty good. So you can see it's kind of making it look magical almost. Again, none of these things should be emitting, emitting light, but I think the question block looks amazing when it emits light. Uh, and so does the pipe. So I'm going to make it kind of this greenish uh, turquoise and maybe make it a bit more uh, subtle. And I think that just adds a nice effect. And then finally, uh, kind of the tricky one is adding uh, dirt. Uh, but here's how you do it. We're going to take generated coordinates, which uh, stretch according to our mesh, uh, to the bounding box. And the nice thing about this is we can literally just take a noise texture. And at some point, we might consider baking this down because adding all these noise textures is computationally expensive. Uh, but we add a noise texture, and then we do a trick that I like a lot, where we take our coordinate system and we mix it with the noiseified texture, making sure this is set to linear light. You're going to see what happens is it's going to take our coordinate system and just kind of distort it a little. So this is without, and then this is with a bit of distortion. What this ends up looking like is if we look at the Z component, and I'm going to kind of offset it since it's kind of like under the brick. So we can just add, or I guess add a negative number. And you can see uh, we get not this like sharp edge, but this kind of eroded edge. So this is before and this is after. It just adds some detail. Speaking of detail, increase the detail, increase the roughness, and that's just gonna give us a bit of a better look, okay? And you can think of this as literally the mask uh, for the dirt. So uh, all we need to do is we're gonna add another color mix for the uh, base color. We're gonna say, use this as a factor, use the pipe color, and wherever it's black, maybe make it like a dark red, something like that, kind of like a dirtish color. And let's see what that looks like. So this is fairly subtle at the moment. I'm thinking, let me make it more intense because I don't feel like I can see it that much. So I'm gonna add a color ramp here and kind of make this higher contrast, but nothing crazy here just so we can actually see it. And let's see what this looks like. Connect that to the factor, view it here. And I think I like uh, the look of that. So if we look at the geometry, you can see we have this nice eroded pipe. And then with the materials, which are gonna take a second to load, uh, you can see we have a lot more going on. 
And then, again, at any point, you can stretch the pipe up and down, apply a new erosion, etc. So, there you go. That's how you make a pipe. I'll see you on the next part. So, you've made it to the end of the tutorial. I hope you learned something, and I appreciate you watching till the end. And at this point, I just want to thank and acknowledge our sponsor uh, for this video and for a lot of videos on this channel, uh, which is Squarespace, a service that I actually use and do recommend. But let me tell you what it is. So, in case you haven't heard, Squarespace is basically a website that lets you make websites. That's right. So, uh, if you don't want to do any coding or HTML, which at this point, I'm not, maybe I'll be interested in it in the future, but now I'm not, uh, Squarespace uh, lets you make websites without any of that knowledge. Although if you have that knowledge, you can also infuse it there. So uh, my website is made with that. Like seriously, uh, check out Squarespace and here are three features that I think are cool. One of which is kind of new, or I guess I haven't talked about it before. Uh, the first one, which is kind of the new one to me at least, is the asset library, which is basically a collection of assets, kind of similar to Blender. It's, an, it's a basically any asset, image, video, whatever that you've used to construct your website, even if some of them aren't like on the website still in some sense. Uh, all of them are organized there. So I actually looked through and saw some images I totally forgot that I uploaded because uh, this website's super old. I made it uh, before I made the YouTube channel, I think, technically, because originally I was selling materials. That's why it's called CG Matter. Second feature that you guys probably know about but is super relevant and useful is analytics. So you can see who is going to your website and demographic type information. So if you're trying to sell something, like I'm trying to sell a rodent at the moment, this add-on that I made, uh, it's important for me to know uh, who's going to the website and how those conversions work, yada, yada. So uh, that is useful for me. And then thirdly, and most obviously, I just want to mention, uh, Squarespace is super easy to use. You just drag and drop assets. Uh, if you want to code, you could code, but you don't need to. So automatic, like, template usage and stuff like that, I highly recommend it. So uh, if this is interesting to you, and it should be if you want to make a website, um, check, make a website. You can go over to Squarespace and make a website so you can like play around with the templates and stuff like that. And when you're ready to take this website live, and I'm sure you will, uh, you can use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you Squarespace for sponsoring. Really appreciate it.